What are some of the behaviors, traits, or issues that people who have been affected by narcissists in their life might have? So how might you be feeling and what might be happening and how might you be acting if you have been exposed to a toxic person, especially for a prolonged period of time? Let's talk about it. You might be feeling depression. You might be experiencing symptoms of depression. You might be having a hard time getting out of bed, having a hard time feeling motivated, feeling sad all the time, feeling less than sad, just feeling nothing. You might be feeling basically any symptom of depression, even physically, where your body is just fatigued and doesn't want to move. That's pretty common and pretty normal, especially if you are in a trauma bonded, trying to recover from discard stage of healing from a toxic person. You might be feeling anxiety tension in your body, stress in your body, anywhere. It could be anywhere. Your shoulders going up, tightness in your chest, burning, irritation, and aggravated stomach issues, tightness in your throat, feeling like you can't even speak, headaches. You might be shaky. You might be frozen feeling. You might have brain fog or other symptoms of anxiety like fear of being out in public, not wanting to talk to anyone, withdrawal and retreat from others because of feeling so anxious and nervous and, and detached from people. So there's all kinds of other symptoms of anxiety, but some of those are some of them, okay? So you might also be feeling hypervigilance, worrying that other people are being toxic to you, seeing narcissists everywhere. And truthfully, there may be toxic behavior around you that you're only just now becoming aware of, but there's a hypervigilance around it where you almost have no tolerance for even the smallest things, jumpy, um, nervous around people or defensive and, and where your boundaries go beyond boundaries and turn more into hardline defensive attitudes toward others because of this feeling that they're going to hurt you first, right? Or that they're in the middle or about to do something harmful to you. You might be feeling toxic shame. There's a feeling of worthlessness that has a feeling of shame associated with it that's directed at yourself for having done nothing, for having, for existence. It, you basically feel shame about your own existence. You feel worthless in your own existence and then feel shame because of that worthlessness. It's been created by toxic people, narcissistic type of people telling you you're not worth anything, doing the love bomb and devalue cycle to the point where it gets so bad often that there is no love bombing. There's only a neutrality and then more devaluing where there's name calling, where there's literal bullying and shaming going on and where you can never elevate your self-worth enough to to actually feel who you really are anymore if you ever could right it lasts for a long time it's not just moments of shame toxic shame lingers and it it's almost permeating everything you're almost always feeling it even things that are really small or mistakes that are made or or things that our normal and everyday life for most people can feel shameful to you about yourself. It's pretty much an awful feeling to have and to experience. Another thing that might be happening is emotional flashbacks, what we call triggers. Triggers happen. What happens after a trigger is an emotional flashback. So a trigger is anything that reminds you of a situation or that reminds your mind, your body, or your emotions. It makes you feel it triggers a thought feeling or emotion it could be anything that relates back to your trauma what happens then is you have what's called an emotional flashback that means in that moment you believe the thing is actually happening you know in your head this person's nowhere near me that's not actually happening but your feelings and your emotions are now back in the past in your trauma re-experiencing the trauma again it's flashing back to the trauma that's an emotional flashback. Other feelings you might be experiencing if you are a survivor of narcissism is feelings of helplessness, feelings of helplessness, feelings of hopelessness, feeling like you can't do this. You're all on your own. You're totally, it's more than loneliness. It's lost at sea, right? It is feeling completely helpless to make your situation any better. 
you might be also feeling withdrawn feelings where you don't want anyone else to step in and make it better, right? You don't want to, you don't want to deal with society. You don't want to deal with people. You don't want to deal with any of it. You feel withdrawn leading toward depression, right? Like so really similar to the depression, depression feelings, but, but in a withdrawn way where you just can't cope. Another thing that might be going on that is kind of behavioral, kind of emotional and kind of an, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of everything is a dissociative reaction as survival. So you might be feeling disassociative. I'm not talking about disassociative identity disorder. I'm talking about disassociation through checking out from what's going on so that you feel safe emotionally. It's sort of a numbing experience to the emotions and allows you to stay in situations so that you can cope with what's going on. Sort of a brain fog, sort of a feeling like you forget what you're saying when you're saying it, a disconnect, um, not having an emotional reaction to what's going on in front of you when you know you normally would or could or maybe should, you know, you might have a hard time connecting with others when you're in this disassociative state, you might have a hard time even connecting with yourself. So yeah, disassociation from trauma as a survival skill is what allowed you to be able to not take all the trauma at once, try to have to process it while you're in it, and then go completely, completely lose yourself right to the trauma, it allowed you to keep going and survive. So it's not a negative but what happens is it becomes a negative because it's you start you're living a normal life now without a toxic person and it still keeps happening so we have to train ourselves when we have a trigger and an emotional flashback to stay in it to relax to trust that we're safe to tell our body that we're safe to bring the energy and the and the emotional response down so that we can get out of that dissociative state. So it's a there's a lot of ways to help all of this. Today we're just going to talk about what this is. We can talk later about things to do to help you with each of these symptoms, behaviors or emotional responses, okay? Loss of self. Loss of feeling like you know who you are. Loss of feeling or experiencing your life through your own eyes with your own mind and your own choices because of the manipulation, the gaslighting, the projecting and all of the stuff that programmed your brain from being with a toxic person, especially if you've grown up with it. So there's two types, well, there's a few things that can go on here, right? If you've grown up with it, you may never have had a sense of self. You've always filtered your world through the way the narcissist told you you're supposed to think about yourself and about everything around you. If you didn't grow up that way and you've had a decent sense of self beforehand, a narcissist can steal it from you through all the projection and all the gaslighting and all the confusing manipulation like we talked about. But you come out and you think, well, they're gone. Why am I still don't know who I am? I don't even know what to eat for breakfast. I don't even know what I like anymore. The things I like, I don't feel anything for anymore. So that loss of self is a very common thing to have happen. If it's going on, there's so much you can do to, to fix that. And yes, we will talk about it in another video very shortly. So there can be somatic things that happen, things with your body, health issues pain issues, sleep issues, you name it, you know, it goes on. The stress of being in a toxic relationship is extreme. It can, I have had clients who have been in, had toxic family members. I have one person I'm thinking of in particular, toxic family member, decided to go no contact with this toxic family member, but, and also, had some health issues that were pretty serious. They were related to the um, the heart, okay? So they were having all these health issues and also going no contact from a toxic family member. It took about six months or so to, we, we worked together breaking the trauma bonds, talking through the toxic shame, talking through the, you know, the beliefs and the programming that went on and learning some skills for calming down and learning some skills to 
uh, help the body somatically release the trauma. That's what we, that's where we went. Her health improved to the point where her doctor hugged her with tears in their eyes. I'm telling you, these people are so toxic to your health. If nothing else, that is the number one reason. It is a number one reason. Let's put this way. If nothing else, it is a huge reason to get away from them. Toxic people cause stress, not only in your head and emotions, but seriously in the body. Another thing that can happen in a behavior that you might be displaying is a mistrust of others, even people you feel safe with. You're most likely learning and have learned to mistrust your own intuition. You can't feel it anymore, often. You can't feel the lightness that happens when something is good and right and the heaviness that happens when something is draining dark and wrong for you because you've had such a confusing mixed up time in this relationship or from this person or you grew up with it right so the mistrust of others is a huge one there's also a mistrust of or a a lack of connection to our own intuition anymore that that again going back to the hypervigilance becomes confusing right some people unfortunately may self-harm that is something that happens. They may self-sabotage. Most of us do that. Self-sabotage and self, self-destruct self in a way from being around the toxic person, from the toxic things that have had you've had happen to you. So that is something to take seriously. Self-harm in particular, take it seriously. Please get the help you need if that is something that's going on with you, okay? And that can be anything from eating disorders to physical self-harm to emotionally beating yourself up, right? So do do please get to the help you need to help yourself heal because you deserve to heal. You're worth the healing. You have been through something totally unjust, totally not your fault. So get the help you need, please self-sabotage okay that's something maybe most of us can see where we do it in our life when we've done it and that takes accountability to get through so again we can talk about how to help with some of these things in another time but just know it's there it's normal that it happens and um hopefully seeing it will be enough to stop you for, for some of the some of the things that you're doing <laughs> right um Self-isolating. Self-isolating away from people is really common for people who have survived a narcissist. You're just kind of done with people and also not feeling so good about yourself, right? It's safer, it's quieter, and sometimes you just don't want to. You just don't want to move. You don't want to be around people. That's normal. It happens. Another thing that can happen is feeling less than others and judging yourself critically based on your comparison of self to others super common. Here's one that I think is interesting. Fear of achieving, fear of succeeding, and fear of having a fantastic life. What? But yes, because we're waiting for the other shoe to drop. We're waiting for somebody to tell us we can't have it. We don't trust it because if we feel it, what if it goes away? It's it's scary. It's scary to have success. That is a very normal thing to experience when you've had toxic people in your life. And then the last thing I want to say here is self gaslighting, convincing yourself that your reality isn't your reality. And one way we do that is by protecting and making excuses for the narcissist who was in your life and their behaviors based on you being the one who caused the problem, you being not enough, you being the problem. You are not responsible for anyone else's behavior towards you unless you are physically attacking them or verbally attacking them for no reason. Then maybe, yeah, you're, you're responsible for the, whatever that person does in defense, right? But as a kind, caring, compassionate human being, you are not responsible for somebody else having a personality disorder that then causes them to do the things that they do. Please try to understand what narcissism is and what other personality disorders are, how they operate, how a person functions when they have those personality disorders so that you understand it was never about you. It's about them, their world, their delusion, and their need to make everything fit the narrative they have in their head to support their delusion and hide from who they really are. 
they need that mask on you guys. They need the supply from you. It's not your fault. So get away from it and stop the self gaslighting, stop protecting them, stop enabling them through protecting them and let them be who they are. So you can be who you are separate and away and safe away from people who will harm you. I am Lise Colucci. I am one of the life coaches at Queen Being. If you need anything, if you need any help, support, or otherwise, check out the information in the main description of this video. And I will see you guys next time. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the thumbs up. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.